Happy first day of December, everyone. The holidays are just around the corner, but before that, the big reveal of the next Grand Theft Auto. I'm Stella Chung, and in today's fix, we'll tell you exactly when and where you can catch the GTA 6 trailer, give you the details on Cyberpunk 2077's latest update, and Capcom's plans for more Resident Evil remakes. Let's get to it. It's time! Rockstar confirmed their Grand Theft Auto 6 debut trailer date for December 5th next week at 9 a.m. Eastern. It's been a long road for GTA fans. The last game in the series turned 10 years old in September, and we always assumed it would get a sequel, but I don't think anyone expected it would take so long. Rockstar Games itself celebrated its 25th anniversary this year, and the announcement of the next game coincides with this milestone. Last month, Rockstar shared this message. In 1998, Rockstar Games was founded on the idea that video games could come to be as essential to culture as any other form of entertainment. And we hope that we have created games you love and our efforts to be part of that evolution. Now, to address the elephant in the room, this trailer will be our first official look at GTA 5. Back in 2022, a hacker released in-development footage of GTA 6 in a massive security breach, but authorities arrested a British teenager related to the hack. Obviously, that isn't how Rockstar was planning to debut the game, and next week's reveal might not show quite as much as the leaked footage did, but undoubtedly will be more polished and helps at the tone. Based on how Rockstar revealed GTA 5 and Red Dead 2, this first look will be a cinematic trailer in engine and will get a more detailed look at gameplay in the months that follow. But I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll surprise us since so much has already leaked. Grand Theft Auto is reportedly returning to Vice City, Rockstar's version of Miami. A 2022 Bloomberg report stated that Vice City is only the starting point and that Rockstar would add in new missions and cities on a regular basis. They also said GTA 6 would include more interior locations than previous GTAs, which I am super stoked about. In that same Bloomberg report, GTA 6 will star two bank robbers in a Bonnie and Clyde style story, possibly named Lucia and Jason, with Lucia being the first female playable character in GTA's 3D era. In 2019, Rockstar filed a patent for more realistic and immersive NPC drivers, which would allow AI drivers to define their own specific characteristics for traversing the road nodes. This technology could be implemented in GTA 6, but all of this is speculation until that first trailer arrives next week. What are you hoping to see from the GTA 6 trailer? Watch it with us live starting at 8.30 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, December 5th. IGN will be covering the whole event with their pre and post show coverage and pointing out every single little detail that we can find in this highly anticipated trailer. We'll see you bright and early on the 5th. Speaking of massive open world games that players waited years for, Cyberpunk 2077 is getting another big update in patch 2.1 that adds in new content and even boss fixes. Just in time for the Ultimate Edition, Patch 2.1 will arrive December 5th that will finally add the long-requested Metro system. Yeah, I know, all those futuristic cars and bikes, and you know what, some people just want to take the subway. Players can travel between 19 metro stations, which can either be a fast travel point or be used like an actual metro ride through the city. There are five metro lines that can be found on their own map, but the system will only be accessible after the Kanpeki Plaza sequence in the main storyline. The update is also allowing players to carry a radio around to listen to the in-game stations while walking around. The radio will turn itself off during dialogue or scripted music sequences. Not that I'm complaining, but there's something funny about this futuristic game getting extremely mundane 20th century features like a municipal transportation and an FM radio. CD Projekt Red also announced boss fight improvements in the update, including Adam Smasher. After Cyberpunk Edgerunners, the anime series released, players complained that his abilities in the game were much weaker and his fight was too easy compared to the menace he was actually meant to be. So now he's going to be a massive force to contend with. Car races will be playable too, and new vehicles will be added, including five motorcycles and Johnny Silverhand's original Porsche 911 that can be unlocked through a brand new quest. Motorcycle mechanics are also being upgraded so you can do tricks while riding them and you can use your throwing weapons while riding the bikes. And finally, there are more accessibility options being offered through a dedicated menu. More people being able to enjoy a game is always a plus, so good on CDPR. The official statement notes that this is not everything included in the update. I can't wait to see what they bring to 2.1. Every time I go back to play Cyberpunk, I always feel like I have to restart the game because of how many new things they add and it just changes the playstyle that I want to have. At a PlayStation Partner Awards event in Japan, Resident Evil 4 Remake director Yasuhiro Anpo said the company has plans for more remakes and will announce them in due time. When asked if Capcom wants to keep making Resident Evil remakes, Anpo replied, yes. 
We've released three remakes so far, and they have all been received very well. Since it allows a modern audience to play these games, it is something I am happy to do as someone that loves these older games, and we want to continue doing more. What game we will remake in the future is something that we would like to announce in the future, so please look forward to it. To recap, Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4 have been remade, so it'll be interesting to see what Capcom will tackle next. The Resident Evil 4 remake had a couple of Easter eggs teasing a remake of 5, but a lot of fans really want Code Veronica. That one's definitely more in need of a modern overhaul since it launched in 2000 on Dreamcast. Anpo went on to say when developing a new game, there is no way to know what will be received well by the players, which makes it difficult. In the case of a remake, there are already players that have played the original, which I think can be seen as an advantage. We are very grateful to users that are vocal about their opinion. It allows us to develop with the player's opinion in mind. For example, if this is how the players feel, then maybe we can make it like this. I think this is one of the reasons why our remakes are so well received. Which Resident Evil would you want to see remade? How many hours of GTA 5 do you have currently? I'm curious which one of our viewers has the most time played, so drop it in the comments. After that, head on over to IGN.com rewards for a couple of pretty cool giveaways happening right now, including an Alienware gaming bundle from Remnant 2 The Awakened King, which includes a laptop, gaming chair, and more, and that ends December 2nd. And a custom Armored Core 6 fires a Rubicon Xbox Series X, which ends December 15th. I'm Stella Chung, keep on gaming, and I'll see you next time.